making his money flow through the streets of Colombia due to his vast wealth through drug smuggling of cocaine in the United States. At the time of his death, a $30 billion empire was destroyed on a rooftop in Colombia. This is the story of Pablo Escobar. Ladies and gentlemen of all ages, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Angry Meat Production. We appreciate you coming in and letting us be a part of your lives week in and week out. We hope to do our best to present you with something that your eardrums delight in. Whether you're looking at us on YouTube or Rumble or listening to us on Spotify, Google, or Anchor, or any of the other podcast services that we are currently on or trying to get on. We thank you. And if you don't mind, at the end of every episode, stop by. Leave us a comment. Leave us a like. If it asks for five stars, we'll take five stars, even if you don't like us. Five stars are what it's all about. With that being said, we hope you enjoy our attempt to make our advocation, our vocation. Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today, we're going to go over Pablo Escobar. The, I don't know if you would call him like, uh, hey, I think he kind of like invented the big time king of uh, cocaine. I mean, that was what he was dubbed for a long time. But he was he was a piece of work. The reason why we're going over him today uh, is basically I I ended up watching Narcos, so and I I love like the cartel stuff and everything. That's the reason why I have BC on all the time. It's because he likes to talk about uh, um, gangs and cartels, and I'm fascinated. I never wanted to be in a gang or anything like that. But I, I'm i fascinated about it. I love, you know, gangster movies and everything like that. That's why reason why we go over gangster gangsters of the past. So let's go ahead and begin on this. Uh, Pablo Emilio Escobar Graves was born December 1st, 1949, and he died December 2nd, 1993. Uh, he was a Colombian drug lord, narco terrorist, and a politician uh, who was uh, the founder and sole leader of the Meta Meta Medellin. I think it's Medellin. Medellin. Oh, Medellin cartel, dubbed the king of car uh, cocaine. Escobar was uh, the wealthiest criminal in history, having an assumed an estimate net worth of $30 billion at the time of his death, equivalent to $70 billion in 2022. While his drug uh, cartel monopolized the cocaine, uh, cocaine trade, I'm going to mess that uh, word up so many times. The reason why I'm messing it up is because uh, I think it was like called the Red Heat with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He kept on saying, cocaine. So... Uh, <laughs> cocaine trade in the United States between 1980s and the 1990s. Born in Rajano and raised in Medellin, Escobar started briefly in the Universita Alumda Latin America of Medellin, but left without graduating. He instead began in engaging in criminal act dealing, selling illegal cigarettes and fake lottery tickets, as well as participating in uh, motor vehicle theft. In the early 1970s, he began work on a various drug smug uh, as a drug as a various drug smuggler, often kidnapping and holding people for ransom. In 1976, Escobar found the Med uh, Medellin cartel, which is uh, distributed, uh, distributed. I can't say that word. 
One of these days, I'll get it. Distributed. Y'all can laugh all you want. All right. Uh, distributed. I'm I'm laughing too. Uh, powder cocaine and established the first smuggling routes from Por uh, Peru, Bolivia, and El Salvador through Colombia and eventually into the United States. Esca uh, Escobar infiltrated into the United States, creating an uh, exponential demand of cocaine by the uh, 1980s, and it was established Escobar led monthly shipments of 700. 70 to 80 tons of cocaine into the country from Colombia. As a result, he quickly became one of the richest people in the United States, uh, in the world. But constantly battling rival cartels uh, domestically and abroad, leading to massacres and murder of police officers, judges, locals, and per uh, permanent politicians, making Colombia the murder capital of the world. Now. Let's get to his early life. Paulo Escobar was born de uh, for, uh, December 1st, 1949 in Regano, Regano, Inquata Department. He was a third of seven children who grew up in poverty in the, uh, in the neighborhood of Medellin. His grandfather, was, uh, his father was a small farmer and his mother was a teacher. Escobar left uh, high school in 1966, just before his 17th birthday, before returning two years later with his cousin, Gustavo Garvel, Garvela. Yeah, if I mess these uh, names up, my bad. I'm not much of a Spanish speaking, even though I come from Texas and we have a lot of Spanish speaking stuff here. At this time, the hard life on the streets of Medellin had published them uh, into gang gangster bullies in the eyes of the teachers. The two dropped out of school after more than a year, but Escobar, who did not give up, briefly became anonymous in Latin America by forging high school diplomas. He then studied in college with the goal of becoming a criminal lawyer, a politician, and eventually the president, but he gave that up because of the lack of money. Escobar began his criminal career in 1966. Escobar was removed from having started his criminal career with his gang by stealing tombstones, sandblasting their inscriptions, and reselling them. Though, it, God, that's, that's pretty fucked up. That is really fucked up. After dropping out of school, Escobar uh, began to join the car theft gang, and as at the age of 20, had already became a household, uh, high, household name for car thieves. He and his gang stole cars and dismantled them to sell, the, uh, sell their parts and, uh, with enough money on hand. Escobar bribed officials to launder his loot. While uh, arrest records have been lost, Escobar apparently set uh, sat in Menadine prison for several months before his 20th birthday. Escobar soon became involved in violent crimes, exploding criminals to, uh, exploding, em employing, damn it, employing criminals to uh, kidnap people who owe, owe him money and demanding ransom, sometimes tearing up tickets even when Escobar received the ransom. His most famous kidnap victim was business businessman i'm gonna butcher this name i'm just gonna do the stephen hawking voice diego echevarria diego echevarria who was kidnapped and eventually killed in 1971 escobar received a fifty thousand dollar ransom from the uh escobari family his game his gang became well known for this kidnapping the beginning of the uh, Medellin cartel. Escobar had been involved in organized crime for decades when the cocaine trade began to spread in Can uh, Colombia in the 1970s. One of Colombia's first drug dealers was Filippo Restrepo, who shipped about 40 to 60 kilograms of cocaine to Miami once or twice a year. Under Esco uh, Escobar's mastermind, Rescrero, yeah, 
was assassinated in 1975, and Escobar, uh, Escobar seized his market and business. Escobar's metrics raised uh, also caught the attention of Columbia Security Services, DAS, who arrested him in May 1976 on his return from drug trafficking in es es Escobador. DAS uh, agents found 39 kil uh, kilograms of cocaine in the shape of a tire in Escobar's car. Escobar managed to chain change the first judge in the lawsuit and bribed the second judge. So he had he had re he was released along with other prisoners. The following year, the agent who arrested Escobar was assassinated. Escobar continued to bribe and intimidate Columbia law enforcement agency with the uh, same fashion. His carrot and stick strategy of bribing public officials in the Colombian government and sent hitmen to murder the ones that rejected his bribe came to be known as the silver or lead or money or bullets. Escobar had and many other Colombian drug lords bought Colombian politicians in uh, both the new liberalism party and the Colombian liberal party. By, con by contributing By contributing political donations in their political campaign, hence Escobar and many other Colombian drug lords managed to infiltrate every level of Colombian government. Because many of the politician candidates whom they backed financially were eventually elected, although the Medellin cartel was, uh, was only established in the you know, early 1970s, it expanded after Escobar met several drug lords on a farm in April 1978. And by the end of 1978, they had transported more than 19,000 kilograms of cocaine to the United States. Soon, the demand of, uh, for cocaine greatly increased in the United States, which led to Escobar organizing more smuggling shipments, routine routes, and desperation, uh, distribution networks in South Florida, California, uh, Puerto Rico, and other parts of the country. He and his uh, cartel co-founder Carl Linder worked together to develop new transshipment points in the Bahamas, an island called Norman K, about 300, 220 miles, about 350 kilometers, uh, southeast of Florida coast. According to the uh, brother, Escobar did not purchase uh, Norm K. It was instead a sole venture of Linder. <clears throat> Escobar and uh, Robert Besco purchased most of the land on the island, which included a one kilometer or 3,300 feet airstrip, a harbor, a hotel, houses, boats, and aircraft, and they built a refrigerated warehouse to store the cocaine. From 1978 to 1982, this was used as the central smuggling routine for the Medellin cartel. With the enormous profits generated by, uh, by this route, Escobar was soon able to purchase 20 square kilometers or 7.7 .7 square uh, miles of land in Aniqua, in Aniqua for several million dollars on which he built the... I'm going to butcher this... Stephen Hawking boy, save me. Hacienda Napolis. Hacienda Napolis. A luxury house he created uh, to can contain a zoo, a lake, a sculptured garden, and a private uh, bullering and other amenities for his family and cartel. Escobar was also involved in philanthropy. Uh, philanthropy. He was giving people money, but we're going to have to make a big word. Philanthropy. Philanthropy. I still butchered that. In Colombia and paid handsome, uh, handsomely for the staff uh, of his cocaine lab. Escobar spent millions developing some of uh, Medellin's poorest neighborhoods. He helped build roads, power lines, soccer fields. He also built, sorry, housing complex for the homeless. Escobar, Escobar 
also entered in politics in 1970s and participated in and supported the formation of the Liberal Party of Colombia. In 1982, he successfully entered the Colombian Congress, although only an alternate. He was automatically granted uh, parliamentary immunity and the rights to a diplomatic passport under Colombia law. At the same time, Escobar was gradually becoming a political figure and became a charitable work be, because of his charitable work. I'm sorry. He was known as Robin Hood Pasta. He alleged once in an interview that his fortune came from bicycle rental company he founded when he was seven, 16. Jesus. Well, politicians lie, so he's actually up on, on that. In Congress, he... Uh, the new uh, Minister of Justice, Rodrigo Lara, Lara Bonilla, had become Escobar's opponent, accusing Escobar of criminal activities in the very first day of Congress. Escobar arrest, uh, Escobar, Escobar's arrest in 1976 was investigated by Laura Bonilla's uh, subordinates. A few months later, liberal leader Louis Carr Gallon uh, expelled es Escobar from the party. Although Escobar uh, fought back, he announced his retirement from politics in January 1984. Three months later, Laura Bonina was found dead. Weird. Columbia jurisdiction had been a target of Escobar throughout the mid-1980s. While bribing and murdering several judges in the fall of 1985, he the wanted Escobar requested the Colombian government to allow his uh, conditional surrender without extradition to the United States. This proposal was in initially answered in the negative, and Escobar subsequently found and impl implementedly supported the Los Extraordinary Organization, which aims to fight extradition policies. The Los Extraditionable organization was sequentially accused of participating in the efforts to prevent the Colombian Supreme Court from studying the uh, conditionally of Colombia's extraordinary treaty with the United States. In support of the November 6, 1985, far-left guerrilla movement that attacked the Colombian jurisdiction uh, juris Jury. We're just going to have the computer say it. Judiciary. Building and killing half of the uh, justice of the Supreme Court. In late 1986, Columbia Supreme Court uh, declared the previous extradition uh, treaty illegal due to the being signed by president delegate, not the president. Wow. that That's a workaround. Escobar's victory over the judiciary was short-lived with the new president's Virgo, uh, Virgo, Virgo, Barco Vargas having quickly renewed his agreement with the United States. Escobar still held a grudge against Luis Carlos Gala, who kicked him out of politics and was assassinated, weirdly, uh, on August 18th, 1989, I wonder who did that, at Escobar's orders. Okay, never mind. Escobar then plant, uh, planted a bond in uh, Alveline Flight 203 when we attempt to assassinate Gallant's successor, Caesar Galva Tarlino, who missed, uh, missed the plane and survived, but, uh, but was on board all... Uh, well, he survived, but I don't put it. Uh, all 107 people were killed in the blast because the two Americans were also killed in the bomb. The United States began an in pre intervene. Oh, intervene direct. Uh, began to intervene directly. Basically, you kill two of our peoples, we'll kill you right back. After the assassination of Louis Caro Galling, the administration of uh, Caesar Garbas moved against Escobar and his drug cartel. Eventually, the government negotiated with Escobar and convicted him to uh, convinced him to surrender and cease all criminal activity in exchange for a reduced sentence 
and preferred treatment during his captivity. Declaring an end to this, a series of previous violent acts meant to pressure authorities and public opinion, Escobar surrendered to Colombia authorities in 1991 before he gave himself up. The extradition of Colombian citizens to the United States had been prohibited by the newly approved Colombian Congress in 1991. This act was com uh, controversial as it was suspected that Escobar and other drug lords had influenced members of uh, the Continental uh, Assembly in passing the law. Escobar was confined in what became uh, his own luxurious private prison, the Sentieta, which figured a football pitch, basically a uh, soccer pitch, a giant dollhouse, a bar, a jacuzzi, a, and a waterfall. Accounts of Escobar's continued criminal activities while in prison began to surface in the media, which prompted the government to attempt to move him from a more confidential, conventional jail on July 22, 1992. Escobar influence allowed him to discover the plan in advance and make a successful escape, spending the remains of his life evading the police. On his death, Escobar faced uh, threats in Colombia police and, uh, and the United States government and his rival, this Cali, Cali cartel. On December 2nd, 1993, Escobar was found in a house in the middle of a middle-class residential area in Medellin by Colombian special forces using technology provided by the United States. Police tried uh, to arrest Escobar, but the situation quickly escalated to... An exchange of gunfire, Escobar was shot and killed while trying to escape from the roof. He was hit by bullets in the torso and the feet, and the bullet which struck him in the uh, in the ear, killing him. This sparked debate about whether he killed himself or whether he was shot dead. After his death, soon after Escobar's death, and subsequently fragmentation of the Medellin cartel, the cocaine market became dominant by the rival Cali cartel until in the mid-1990s when the, its leaders were either killed or captured by the Colombian government. The Robin Hood image that Escobar and had cultivated and maintained at the last influence of Men in Medellin, many there, especially many of the uh, city's poor whom Escobar had aided while he was alive, mounted, uh, mourned his death and over 2,000 25,000 people attended his funeral. Some of them considered him a saint and prayed him for receiving divine help. Escobar was buried in at a Marcinta Serenco uh, cemetery. But that's about that. What is... Uh... Yeah, that's about it. Uh... What's really strange, I mean, if you've seen photos of his uh, prison, it was, it was a pretty nice prison. I worked in a prison, and it, it's not not it was never that nice. It was basically his home away from home. But when I say that uh, in the beginning of this, that he basically made the streets flow with his money at one point in time, the reason why I say that. It's because he buried. He had so much money or so much cash, and he couldn't uh, launder it that fast. That he would bury the money. Uh, he he basically made so much money that the the rats would eat it. Uh, it would literally if it if there was a big downpour, uh, it would flood, and the money would rise up and flow through the streets. It literally flow through the streets and through the rivers and the banks it you could just pick up this money uh there a lot of his money is unaccounted for that's another thing but in hindsight he ran a ruthless ruthless organization and anybody that got in his way he did kill uh he that's the reason why he's a psycho so sociopath because he murdered a lot of people 
but he did do a little bit of good with his money. That, that was that's what most uh, uh, mafioso type people, cartel mafioso, uh, criminal organization. They they try to keep the peace within their community and everything by buying a lot of stuff for their community, which is sorry talking a lot got to drink uh but it, it's it just it helps your to the point to where a lot of people it, it's a lot harder for someone to arrest you if you do a lot of uh charitable donations and whatnot but that's that's about it for Pablo Escobar thank you for all for watching listening whatever you're doing uh Love you guys. Talk to y'all later.